Hi, my name is Suwan and if you're watching this video, then my new game is now out on Steam. This means that you can grab Maggie the Magnet and get a few hours of fun with Science and Magnets for just under $3. What's even better is that Maggie came out with a bonus, a separate hidden object game with randomly generated piles of trash. In this game, you are overseeing the process of turning the trash into ashes inside an incinerator. You need to find all the forbidden objects that inevitably make it into the piles of trash and blow them up so that the rest of the garbage can be safely burned down. If you'd like to jump straight into the action, the link to download it is waiting for you in the description to this video. And if you're curious to see how this game was made, here comes the devlog. This project began with a simple task. Can you drop like 50, 100 or 200 objects in Unity without any performance issues? The answer turned out to be yes, but only if you use rather imprecise collisions. In the final game you can see that the objects tend to get inside of one another for a moment and only then correct their positions. That isn't perfect, but I still think that doesn't change the fact that 200 objects falling down and colliding with each other is quite a mesmerizing sight to behold. The very next thing I tried to implement were color palettes. I kept everything in the game in grayscale so that I could easily tweak the colors of objects or backgrounds and achieve a lot of variety by simply moving the color picker. Eventually, I came up with a few color palettes that looked good to me and turned them into in-game rewards for successfully clearing the levels for a certain amount of times. Even though you only unlock two colors for every achievement, one for objects and one for the background, you can freely mix them with any other that's already available to you. This gives players a lot of options to customize their incinerator however they like. Another solution that increased the variety and replayability of the game were random piles of trash. First of all, I told the game to pick and spawn different objects from the pools of garbage I created. Then I made art for different variations and patterns that I wanted these shapes to have. The game now picks one specific pattern of one random shape and declares it a hazard. You as a player need to find all instances of this hazard and click on them to blow them up. 11.5 hours into the development, I already had a fully working prototype with placeholder sound effects, an animation for incineration and a simple UI that shows how many times you've successfully inspected the trash. And at that point, I decided to redo the most time-consuming part of Trash Bomber. I showed it to my girlfriend and while she enjoyed the concept of the game, its art quickly started to hurt her eyes. One of the tricks I used to remove some of the visual clutter was reducing the thickness of outlines on all of the objects. Once I had this figured out, I began working on other aspects of the game. I improved the burning animation, added UI buttons and implemented a settings menu where you can choose your preferred color palette. Then came the time for me to do something about the sound effects. For this project, I decided to work on them myself, so I set up the microphone and recorded a bunch of household objects. Later, I downloaded Reaper and started watching various tutorials about that software online. The one sound effect that gave me the most trouble was a victory jingle. I really liked the placeholder sound I had in the game and since I don't know how music works, I couldn't come up with anything like that myself. What I ended up doing was just drumming on the keyboard with my fingers like I always do and adding some effects to that sound in Reaper. I think it turned out alright, but it made the game feel more dark and gloomy which was not at all what I wanted for Trash Bomber. I eventually reached out to Hypersleep and luckily he agreed to save the day. Here is the final result along with the new UI animations and other sound effects including the mm -mm from my girlfriend. <laughs> the one thing I had no problem with and also one of the things that inspired the creation of this free game was the soundtrack. I have a few soundtracks from Hypersleep that I asked him to make but haven't really used anywhere. I think that it's a crime to leave his music lying around, so I've always wanted to find a way to repurpose at least one of those tracks. After almost exactly two years, I finally found a use for this gorgeous soundtrack from an unfinished and pretty much unplayable game I made for the GMTK Game Jam 2020. Finally, I improved the animation for the main action of the game, which is blowing up the headers, and added an animation for changing the headers between different trash piles. 
Trash Bomber was a really easy and fun game to make. I worked on it mostly just to relax after finishing Mega the Magnet while still doing something productive. As an experiment, whenever I sat down to work on this game, I set a timer and calculated how much time I spent working that day. This timer was paused every time I took a break and wasn't actively doing anything to bring the game closer to the finish line. Thanks to that, now I know for sure that the creation of this game took me exactly 69.5 hours of viewer work. If you'd like to see a detailed breakdown of how I spend that time and support my project at the same time, I cordially invite you to join us on Patreon. This way you'll help me stay afloat as a game developer and get a bunch of behind-the-scenes information as a bonus for your support. And that's it for today. I had a lot of fun making Trash Bomber and I hope you'll have fun playing it for yourself too. It's perfect for kids and even better for parents. There are no ads, no in-game purchases, no nothing. Just download the game and you are ready to go. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.